lovely Laveau and fam or something else. Let's start the show off right. Peekaboo. Hey. <laughs> all, all right. Word to Big Kendrick. He in another galaxy right now. I don't know what he oh. got going on. Are you from Bompton right now, cuz? Yeah. I told you. Every Over time here? I listen, every time I listen to Kendrick dog, I feel like I gotta, you know, walk on a nigga or something. I'm sorry. I'm very much from North Carolina. I'm very country. I just wanted to the feel big, special. The big the, from Bompton. He from Bompton. I don't know what none of that means. I'm from North Carolina. I, 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 hey, anybody that's affiliated or listen to him, I ain't affiliated to nothing. Don't be coming to my house trying to squash my mess. I don't know that got nothing. It was a joke at North Carolina, okay? That's it. Do the intro, man. <laughs> hey, man, welcome to something else. A show where we uh, talk to folks around the world pro wrestling about something else other than pro wrestling. I am. Yo, fam, 790 is social media choice, a.k.a. the Aunt Anderson Podcast, and a.k.a. Captain Bro Abano, Brew Diamond Phillips, Thicket the Dragon, Steve-O, Pod Champagne, God's favorite podcast, the Potty Potty Piper. I'm in the podcast, Chew Bubblegum, and I'm all out of dentine ice. And my tag team partner. As always, it's your girl, Lovey Laveau, and today we have a fantastic guest that we've been trying to get on the show since we started the show, and just schedules was scheduling. But it's okay because we got him here. We have the world famous Nick Harrison, aka the professor. Sir, how you doing? Lovely fam. It is fantastic to be on with the both of you. I've been waiting to be on something else for a while. And you know, like you said, the schedule will be scheduling the day. But you know, I'm glad to be here right now with both of you. Please forgive me. We are redoing part of the house, so I got all kind of furniture behind me, but it's all good because we got the built up there too. Hey. So yeah. Okay, because fam, fam over there looking like electric boogaloo the way his <laughs> doing with him today. I don't <laughs> I don't know where he at right now, but it's so good to have you. We've been wanting to Thank bring you, so you here much. just to kind of get some energy from you. Because honestly, mm-hmm. we're gonna start it off like this. Since I've known you, you have probably been the most consistently positive person that has been a part of my internet journey and now a part of my personal life. So my first question, just to pop this off, how in the world do you stay (laughs) as positive as you are? Drugs, Uh, drugs, no, I'm kidding. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) All right, I've been not even five minutes in and already, what? You know, I'm a believer, so that is a large part of how I can stay positive. I feel, you know, God's got me. That's kind of my mantra. And I try to just keep in mind that there are always people that are going through worse stuff than I am. You know, things could be worse. Things could be more devastating than they are. And there's there's always going to be a silver lining or a positive spin that you can put on the things in your life. I do not look at bad situations, don't look at messed up situations and automatically just mope and mm-hmm. and, and moan for however long because I got to get up. I got to keep moving. There are yeah. other things that need to be done. There are people that are dependent on me. I got three kids. I got a wife. I got all kinds of people that are around me that depend on me for especially the people on social media who are yeah. always in my DMs, always in my comments. I was at the grocery store today and picking up some food, and there's this lady who's like, Oh, are you the yeah? I'm like, I didn't even know you lived over here. I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she goes, Hey, it's scary. You, I'm like, You are the you, you are so positive. I always know I can get a smile from your page, you all, and we need that right now. And yeah. in the world, the world, in our world right now, we need somebody that can be positive. Because there are so there's so much negativity that's surrounding yeah. us. So I make it my mission to make people smile every single day and try to be as positive as I can. And I honestly will say thank you for as many times you've encouraged me. Your wife has encouraged me. I do not take it lightly. I don't think y'all understand how much y'all keep me going. Because if it wasn't for you, him, and a couple other folks. <sighs> 
Well, yeah. you know we love you. you know? <laughs> and you I know, love you back. There's a lot of love in this house for you, my dear, uh, for myself and my lovely wife who just sings your praises on a regular basis. So she's very happy that we're doing this right now. And uh, so, you know, just just know that we got you. We got I appreciate you. you. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Electric Boogaloo. You know. So... <laughs> I mean, I, there's, there's, there's like yeah, a bunch of places I need to go. The first place I'm going to go is why don't the Buffalo Bills have a stadium? Uh -oh. This, I mean, a, a dome, because this is ridiculous. I saw what they yeah. did this week. They cheating with the weather at this point. They cheat. Well, you know, it's Buffalo, man. If you have, you've been, have you been to Buffalo before? Nah, I listen to West Side Gun all the time, though. I have yeah, Buffalo well, wings. Well, there you go. That's, you, both of you have the experience of Buffalo, apparently. Uh, but it's, it's a, it's a culture there it's a culture it's a it's a it's a mantra it's a way of life for them so they don't necessarily want to dome they want to go and shovel snow on sunday morning before the games and all those things because it's a part of their life it's what they love so much and you know it's a it's a close-knit group in buffalo so you know if i was there i'd be shoveling snow too i ain't gonna lie i'd be up there because they pay you know they're paying twenty dollars an hour Hot lunch. I can't. I can't. I don't make that now. So um, let me. Where, where is that? <laughs> Tell you what, Dallas Cowboys better not call us to shovel nothing. Nah, I know nice. what they shoveling and it ain't snow. <laughs> Wait a minute. All yeah. right, that's enough. We are that's shoveling. Enough. Nah, I ain't gonna go there. Um, <laughs> I just so like so. I'm sitting there watching the game this week and. It isn't even just people like actually actively in the field of play. Like people out there on the goddamn baby Bambi, uh, baby deer legs, trying to make it to the line of scrimmage. Like, kind of people gonna get hurt. <laughs> Look, if you watched that game, you saw James Cook get down on that little scamper. What was it, sixty some yards? Then he took it to the house. He he didn't look like he was on baby legs to me. What like kind of was, cleats did he have? Some special, I, like the cheating Buffalo cleats. His cleats, his calls, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Please. He, was, he, he, he had it go. Uh, Josh, of course, being Josh Allen, jumping towards the pylon, doing his thing. It's they take pride in that kind of stuff, man. As that that team takes pride in those types of things because Buffalo, New York, is a different kind of animal. They bring home a Super Bowl championship to that city. Let me tell you something. They about to tear Buffalo. Well, they ain't going to tear Buffalo down. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be a problem. It's, it's going to be a party, and I'm going to be there. Um, I will we, be saw there. With, we saw what Philly did when they got their first one. Mm -hmm. They know how to act. Mm -hmm. Philly don't know how to act, period. But Philly can look, get some new cheesecake meat. And they, they'll, they'll be ready to fight. They get a brand new cheesecake, and they'll be trying to tear something up. The but Philly don't. ain't been through what Buffalo been through neither. Dude. But it's Philly. Buffalo been through it. Through it. I get it. Four of them in a row. Mm -hmm. Boy, I love losing Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. It's there. I'm about, they are doing the documentary Cowboys right now. Cowboys. Yeah, I, I can't. I see it now. Two of them. Two of them against the Cowboys. Two of them against the Cowboys. I yeah, that. Atlanta was ugly. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> They're filming a, uh, a documentary right now called Just One Before I Die by Buffalo Bills fans and, you know, their quest for at least just one championship because that's what a lot of their fans, a lot of fans of the Bills say, you know, I just want one before I die. Just please, just just one. You know I how die. horrible of a streak you got to have for there to be a documentary about people wishing for this. This is a make a wish for some people. Pretty much. This is that's nasty. I'm in the movie. I'm in the movie. <laughs> that's amazing. Are you jumping through one of them tables in the parking lot? No, 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 no. It's just an interview. I was standing. In, <laughs> I was standing in front of the uh, tailgate. I was not jumping through tables in that one. I want to. I will eventually. It's going to happen. What you got going on, man? See you out here jumping through tables. You can choke slam through rings and stuff sometimes. What's going on? Why, why, why I mean, you to hurt yourself? Blood for punishment, I guess. I don't know. I love a good bump. Can I say? 
He did say he liked not like that. Uh, not okay, like that. <laughs> not like that. I said we did. I know what I said earlier, shit. but no, 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 not that. Uh, you know what? Thing time. I, love, I love a good callback, and I was going to say, third one. I know. Yeah. We gonna have we'll a get you the program. The yeah. third one. We you got get you one the program. drug reference, and this is gonna turn into something else. I know. Real. I know. <laughs> something else. Real. I know. <laughs> I'm already knowing. It's okay. So, lovely, will you tell the professor how he hurt you? Your addiction <laughs> has affected me in the, in the following ways. <laughs> Listen, I, you ain't gonna be talking. You know she loved me. <laughs> That's very it's fast. not. Very fast. Um, I, you know what? That's when great. we had ten how minutes, you do this. I quit. Yeah, we didn't turn it. Plus I quit. In a whole drug addict. This is this is <laughs> That's a new bit. Crack oh, no. Crackhead I'll, Nick. That's your I'll go to Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm they got my life right. Praise <laughs> Jesus. And this is where Kyle, this is where Kyle puts in the uh the words two weeks later. Professor checks himself <laughs> into the rehab facility. He fades out. He <laughs> left three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> and the car was playing Rick James. I'm going to Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> what in way is that? No, not the way. Now we know that you are a huge Bills fan. We've are, we've seen it, we've smelt it, we've had to endure it. Outside of that's unfortunate. Outside of the Bills, <laughs> outside of of course wrestling, what is something else, ha, huh, that uh you are a huge fan of that people may not know? Uh music. Yeah. I love I music. Figured. Big fan of music. Just put just anything that you want to put in front of me. You know, a lot of the content is the rock and you know the old school stuff, but I do like some of the newer stuff. I just got finished listening to the new Kendrick album. Turn it up. Uh it's yeah. Hey man, I, I when you well, I think it what was it on X we were talking about every time you hear Luther? Yeah, I felt that who was that Jimmy? Oh, that Jimmy was, Jr. Yeah, I, that, I felt I felt that in my mm. mind. Right there, right there. Right there. Just it's but I you know I I love music. Yeah, if it's good, then it's then I'm with it. Just you know, give me something that I can listen to, something that I can get into. I'm more of an old school guy, more of a uh, Teddy Pendergrass, you know. Kind of do close the door, turn, turn them off. off. <laughs> just, so that's just, you know, just, it, that that's more my speed. Yeah, but I mean, I love music. So if you're asking for something that I'm like, something that I love, uh, you know, in the same vein as you know wrestling and, and all this other than the bills and all this other music, music. Is yeah, like, I think that's what something that I, I think I've tweeted before. If there's one thing I can talk about more than wrestling. It is music, so Amen. that's one of those things that can kind of transcend everything. Yeah, everything at all. What's who are you like? If you had to pick one artist, it was like, oh, that's my favorite artist of all time. Uh, that I always hate to do those types of questions because people will come in to my lives all the time. Mm. And they'll ask, you know, who's your favorite artist? Or who? What's your favorite song? What's your favorite musician? And it changes by the day. That's who me, it today? man. Like, who? Oh, who is it today? Mm. So then, do it like this. Can you give, uh, give us who the professor is in three artists? Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, Fuji's. Okay. Shout out to Prize. He doesn't count. Weezer. Okay. All right. All right. And. Luther Vandross. Because yeah. oh, <laughs> look, when you talk about, I grew up in a household with my mother, you know, a single parent household. We were the get up on Saturday morning, clean mm -hmm. the house, play a bunch of vinyl. And Luther was always the first choice. And of course, you're going to get guys like James Ingram and the, yeah. uh, Prince and all of that. And, you know, that's just the Barcades, Commodores. Yeah. The list goes on and on and on and on. And it's like, though, that's kind of where the foundation is for me now. It's, I got older, especially in my teen years. I became, you know, into the rock and roll and all that. You know, some good old fashioned rock and roll. <laughs> and uh, Weezer was right up there at the top for me. I, I love their, the way that they infused like pop and punk and all this stuff together. 
And <clears throat> now that you've got, you know, a little bit older, now that I've gotten a, bit old, a little bit older and can appreciate a lot of different genres of music, you know, I always look back at the Fuji's as somebody, as a group who were a, you know, that was a kind of a coming of age for me. Like the yeah. score was a very mm. coming of age album for me. Fu- the the first time I heard Fuji album. live, like the first time I heard Fuji live was like, what? Yes, come on. Yeah. And it made me go back and listen to more, some more of their stuff and uh, going into, you know, Miss Education of Lord Hill mm. and what she was able to do within that era of music. I, if there's one per, uh, now, now I'm going off on a tangent. No, do you think? No, we here. If there is one person that I feel did not ever get the credit that they deserved or never was able to go get their footing, it was John Forte. If you mm. remember during that time with uh, the Wyclef John and the Carnival and all that stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. And he got busted on drugs and he had just come out with his first solo album, and it was like. The, the whole nuts baby nuts baby John Forte for me was a big part of me coming of age in like you know 17 18 19 yeah. years old listening to hip hop and really just getting into it and <clears throat> that was huge for me like that whole yeah. family of people you know the refugee camp that was, was so underrated group yeah. of people yeah. you know a lot of people talk about the umbrella and uh you know all of these different i call them of course factions uh-huh. in music and i think that particular everything is wrestling at the end of the day don't play with me. Pretty much, yeah. that particular group of people i don't think gets talked about of course it gets overshadowed a lot of times with lauren because i mean lauren of course. but they're so you're right there was a lot left on the table like refugee camp with like John Forte Cannabis that was, a, was a part of that too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was so a lot that was like, table. you know, that was that was my guy. Like cannabis was my guy. But around that time, it was like the refugee camp all star flip mode, mm-hmm. uh death squad. But that, look, look, shout out to him. Look. <laughs> I love Spliff. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, he's he's one of the, he's he's the great. greatest type Spliff, man. Uh, ever. Spliff. Split was one split, split for me is up there with Flavor Flame. It's like one hundred percent big time hype man. Yes, but it was who was that? The, the other uh, uh, a Rampage last Boy Scout who was a part of them too. He wow, that the night. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I I, did, I, I liked him. I, I liked that guy. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Shout out to um Big Ellie. When you said cannabis, that's the first thing I thought about. That was a okay. fun time in music. Okay, it, Can, it was. I, I you know, know it's we, weird. I was um, when the refugee camp uh, tour was going on and they were touring for the carnival Mm. and they had everybody but Lauren with them. They came to Towson State and my homie was the DJ for Towson. Like he was the guy that they used for all their rap events. And we were backstage and we met cannabis and I drank beer and smoked cigarettes with John Forte. So it was crazy when you say those names specifically in that era. That that was a time. Yeah. yeah. It was, man. Like for me, that was from like a gold from for me, a golden age of hip hop was like the late nineties, early, real early two thousands. Where some of these groups and some of these artists were really coming into their own, yeah. And you had like these camp, these large camps of hip hop artists who were like coming together underneath this record label umbrella. But you always had that one big star, yeah. Like for Refugee Camp, it was Wyclef, it was Lauren. For Flip Mode, it was Busta. Yeah, you always had that one, you know, that one for a uh, hot boy, like a uh, 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 not hot boys, uh, uh, cash, cash money, cash money, cash yeah. money, it's Juvie. You know, but Wayne started coming up after that. You know, look, look, look. You have to understand something. I, th- I think you already know what I'm about to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Juvenile and Nelly. Mm-hmm. LL a little bit, but these, them two. Mm-hmm. My first hip-hop crushes. When I tell you to this day, if Juvie the Now comes to my house and asks me to bag it up, Call me U Haul because I'm backing it the fuck up. I'm sorry, I know that's call the me. word I can't really say, but I'm gonna back it up. Call me U Haul. <laughs> call me U Haul is the name of the episode. Call me. You gotta come to my house, huh? <laughs> let me t- listen. You wanna take the clothes off, huh? I, let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> when they had that, uh, Lil Wayne had that concert and he pulled out the hot boys. We, I was on the phone with a group of people. Shout out to Kobe and them. 
um, was on the phone and we was watching it. And all I was doing was sitting there. I was like, as soon as Juvenile come out, this going to be for me. And I'm hanging up. <laughs> I'm hanging up the phone. And he still mm-hmm. looks great. Okay. So <sighs> just the day, because I went to college in Louisiana, Grammar State University, and so did like college university. Uh, just to date myself, Uh-oh. when I was I was around a freshman, I want to say either senior in high school or freshman in college. And I was walking into a basketball game. You know, they used to pass out like the the CDs, mm-hmm. and samplers of all these different people. And they handed me this CD of the of this guy that nobody ever heard of before. He was just about to hit. It was country grammar. Was the <sighs> CD that they handed to me? They're like, here, check this out. I play. I, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! Did you just stop down country grammar? Whoa! Is that where we are? Did that you just hide the street? You just throw them down, country grandma. You just gonna crush doubles. Hot shit! You just turned what? I'm sorry. I pardon. No, no, no. Excuse me, professor. I know this is about you right now. Hold on, brother. All right. What do you mean, brother? I'd I'd like to know as well. I I don't care for. uh, I've never cared for Cornell's uh, brand of music. Or. But country grandma. I can understand I the the newer stuff after Country Gram. After Nellyville, I can understand not really I, I rocking. I old stuff after that. I didn't like Sweat or Suit or Ville or this is, it's, I listen, I'm trying. To, no, thank you. And, and a, a quick no, thank you. <laughs> a very, a very <clears throat> No, thank I didn't get disrespectful. I was nice about it. He's, you are, guys. I hope you know He seems like a very nice guy, and it's got a you know beautiful old lady, and they episode. over there making babies. It's great. But shout out to Ashanti. Shout out to Ashanti. I hope, I hope Ashanti do Nelly like ASAP Rocky is doing Rihanna. Keep going. I'm sorry. We were supposed to be going somewhere else. Keep going. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> I, that's. I don't think I've heard anybody really say. They didn't like at least country grammar. Mm-hmm. That was a great album. That was a fun time in music. And I it's think like, that's something that we're missing. I, it, just to get you guys' opinion, it's as far as music as a whole, especially hip hop, right? I want them to bring the factions back. And I don't really mean just a group of people that do the same drugs and they just happen to rap together. Mm-hmm. I mean like the the factions, like the the dipset, like the lunatics, right. like you know oh, what I mean? Dipset. Oh, who, what? Who was your favorite rap faction of all? Oh. Besides the Fugees, before besides the refugees. Besides camp. refugee camp, uh, it might have been. It, it was Dipset. Dipset. I love Dipset. Uh, I was a, uh, a big fan of Cam. Uh, Confessions of Fire. Oh man, was just a just a fantastic album. Uh, he liked the Scooby Doo, that Hooby Who rap. I see what kind of rap that you no, like. That wasn't, Cam wasn't Cam wasn't Koofy Koofy in, until the no, third no. album. I know oh. he, he was riding for a little bit, but I I see what the professor is. In. Yeah, but look, you know, that's this is all my era. Like, listen, like that, that, that first that Dipset album, like the, the, the yeah, the yeah, very yeah, first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Before was, the commercialness yeah. started to kind right, of right, right, seep right, into. Right, 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 right. Then you know, Dev Jam fight for New York, right there. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. We are old. Now we're talking. Yes, yeah. we are. <laughs> we are. We are elderly. But well, okay. we, we are something else. I tell you. <laughs> but we Ooh, look good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just speaking for me. These niggas look terrible. Anyway. <laughs> oh, speaking, speaking. Once again, <laughs> hatred for the bald brother with a beard is real. Because like bald you. men are evil. All right, yo, I think come on, y'all. Man. I've seen this agenda true. online. This is ridiculous. Is We're going to turn it up right here since I'm I'm outnumbered, and I don't mind. There are three bald men personally that I know that might be okay. Two of them are on this screen. Okay. Everyone else, Wilkins. <laughs> 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 Who else I'm gonna say? Uh, Everybody else is evil. It's Stone Cold. Excuse me. I never just. I never just smirk. Not Steve. We ain't gonna do Steve. Fix it. We'll fix it if he unblock me. What did you do to get blocked by Steve Austin? All I did. Uh oh. It never starts off good. All I did is do a uh, spirited impression. Actually, funny enough. It was a, a impression of a movie scene that also involved Cornell. Nelly, you did not do that. 
You why like would that you word, do, huh? You get mad? Would, you get mad when I say that word, huh? What? Why would you do that? Does that bother you, boy? Because it was <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> That's how a white man runs the football. <laughs> White man runs the football was the funniest line in that movie. Because imagine the gall to say that to a black man. This is how a white man runs the football, boy. I would, boy, I'd stab you in the chest. Damn, we got a petition for Stone Cold Steve Austin to unblock Ill Fam 79. Come on. I don't do it because I'm not going to stop doing the impression. So, no, don't unblock me. Unblock me, please. Hershey, the one, the dog, all of them. Just keep blocking me. <laughs> oh boy, that's that's this is why bald men are uh inherently evil. So we know that you are going on tour soon, or actually have a show soon with another bald man. Um, would you like to tell us about that? You can have a comedy show. I would. Uh, that is this Friday in New Orleans at Howlin' Wolf with uh December 6th. I don't know when this is gonna air. December 6th in uh, New Orleans with uh Mark Henry. The world's strongest man. Uh, We are doing a comedy show. Uh, It is going to be. It should be a lot of fun. I've I've never seen uh, him do stand up. I know he's funny. Uh, Mark is hilarious. Mark Uh, is annoying. He's (laughs) (laughs) in the best way possible, and I mean it with love. (laughs) When he he sends me. Stuff on Instagram, Instagram all day, every, every day. day. All like I wake up in the morning, and it's like five messages from Mark Henry. Yes, sir, and I, they're all real. I, and I sent you this again because I know if you got it the first time. Like <laughs> God, dog, Mark, thank you, I appreciate. It. But he, no, he's funny. He's real silly. Uh, he loves to entertain, and uh, he was coming down. There's a wrestling show going on on Saturday here, mm-hmm. and he was coming down for a signing. It's him, the Dudleys. Mandy uh, Sachs and uh, the Sandman and a couple other dudes. Okay. And he was like, yeah, why don't we get together and do a show? So I'm going to be there anyway. I said, okay, Mark, sure. Why not? And see, me, I know you mess with me and you're like, oh, you're a celebrity. You blah, blah, blah. Yes. I know you mess with me. Like, but you already know that I'm like, whatever. I ain't. So yeah. for me, I'm still like, oh my God. I'm doing a comedy show with Mark Henry. That's crazy. I, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, and I admire him greatly. So to be able to collab with him and work with him, to me, is huge. It's, yeah. it's gigantic. It's a, it's a huge, huge deal. And we got some folks coming in for the show to hang out and watch, and it should be a good time, and I'm looking forward to it, man. It's just the way that social media has created these opportunities, going from uh, being on the bump and then mm-hmm. making fun of me for making videos about how I look like Mark Henry to actually doing a show with Mark Henry and then doing content with him about how we look alike. It's just, <laughs> it's it's insane, but I'm it's very fun. thankful. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. It's so good. I think we found out that Mark Henry did stand up on this show when he was mm-hmm. on the show. I had no clue that, I was like, people think you funny? <laughs> like, yeah, apparently. I, hell, I didn't know. I was like, you funny looking. I didn't know that she was outstanding. Funny. How do you how do you go about putting together a set? Because that that seems to be a bit <laughs> of a daunting task. Like it is. they talk about comedians talk about working on a tight fifteen pause mm. uh, over like years. <laughs> it takes a while. Like it takes a long time. Where I'm still, I started writing. <clears throat> like 15 minutes worth of material, 15, 20, 25, actually, maybe 30. I keep getting, it keeps getting bigger. Uh, pause. Pause. Uh, <laughs> great pause. Great pause. But this summer, I started writing material, and I'm still working on getting like a type 15, 20. Um, hmm. okay. it's, it takes a while. Uh, what it's, it's all about things that go on in your life. Like one of my one of my bits is, and I posted on uh, socials. I don't know if y'all saw it. Is uh, about me going to Wingstop and hearing them mm. playing Jodeci. Yeah, it's like I can't, <laughs> I can't trust that sauce. I don't want none of your ring. <laughs> no, when I when I ordered Bone In, that is not what I was talking. About. <laughs> All right, that's good. But that's right. that, that took good. a while. That, that kind of stuff takes a while, man. Like it's it takes a bit to. Take these stories that come from your everyday life 
and make them funny. Because, mm. you know, you there may be something that happens to you that you think is funny, but nobody else thinks it's funny. You ever have one of those stories and you tell people like, yeah, this happened to me, and you think this is hilarious, and they're just looking at you like, oh, yeah, what's funny about that? That's, or that's feel like they need to call your therapist. Exactly. So it's like, you have to work on this stuff and, you know, see what works, what doesn't work. If it works, keep it in. If it doesn't work, take it out. Yeah. And awesome. get to the point where you that get that. She said. Another pause. Got it. We are here. We pause it all through this. This is a pause conversation. <laughs> big pause. Is... Big pause, big perk. Um, <laughs> just... I, to, I can't remember who I was talking to. I was in Philly. And she, I was talking to this girl. She said, Per. I said, huh, big per. And she just fell out of her chair. She I would have popped chair. so hard if I'd have had I, said per. Big per. Oh, did you outdo look, my per? Look, look here, baby. You know <laughs> that I love you. I love Faye. I love that whole crew. So yeah. if I if I if I hear somebody say per, my automatic response is gonna be big per. Big per. Big per. The on. biggest of pers. But it's, <laughs> it's it takes a lot to answer your question, fam. It takes a long while. Uh, I'm still working on mine and getting mm -hmm. thankfully through like networks, knowing different people. I know a bunch of stand up comedians, so I have people that I can send my material to, and then volunteer to look at it and say, Okay, this is what I like, what I didn't like. You can take you can take the, the advice if you want to, if you don't want to, that's fine, but this is what I would do. And just help me to contour my stuff to where it actually works. Because yeah. I've always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Before I even start doing the social media stuff, stand-up is what I wanted to do. I remember, and we this is a story that we tell, but this my, my wife tells the story all the time, or at least she mentions the story all the time, because she says that me doing stand-up now is, a rec is reclaiming a dream that I had when I was a kid. Mm. Because cool. I was a I was 11 years old. I was at a uh, 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 a pep rally. We were doing homecoming, and they were like, "You like stand up? Do you want to do a stand up set at homecoming at our, at our pep rally?" I said, "Yeah, sure. Why not?" Got booed out the gym. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, high school kids are is it high exactly. school or college? This is high school. This is high, high school. school. That's really those high kids. High. But it was in front well, of those kids. High one kids of high school kids. Yeah, yeah, those those kids want to boo you. Oh, this mom, he think he funny. Oh, did right. he oh, miss the funny, funny man? Yeah. So this, yeah so this was going to be. I was set up for disaster. Set 100%. up for from the beginning. But I was so discouraged after this moment that I just stopped. I gave up. I was like, I was done. I was recording stand up. I was watching this stuff all the time. And I was like, yeah, I'm done. So, uh, lat earlier this year. I got an email from some stand from uh, some comedy clubs out west. Mm. They're like, "Hey, would you like to come and do a show?" It's like me. You want me to do a show? But I'm, you know, I'm not a stand up. They're like, "It's fine. We bring influencers in all the time to come and do shows. You can do whatever you want and give you ninety minutes, all that." So, like, look, if I'm going to do a comedy show, I'm going to do some stand up. I'm not just yeah. going to do anything. I'm not going to be like somebody. I'm not. I'm not Jake Paul. I'm not just going to get up there and do whatever. Try to work. So I um, went to my local open mic, started working on material, got out there, did my thing, uh, found somebody who was helping me with my material to, to work through it, not to write it for me, but to help me figure out what works, what doesn't work. And through that, I was able to get a good 25 minutes of material. Uh, out of all of that work that I was doing, and now we're on tour with the whole genetic takeover thing, doing stand up, and uh, got the show with Mark coming up, and we got a bunch of dates coming up next year. So I'm very, it, this is this is a dream reclaim for me, and I'm very thankful that I've had the opportunity to take it, take it back, take it back. Tell you, you got to reclaim my dream. It. Hey man, I I love that. Um, I would like to. Reclaim a little bit of violence here. Let's choose a little bit of violence. And can you let's do it? Can you give us your stand up comedy Mount Rushmore? Oh, dear God. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I okay. Violence. Right out top, prior. Right. And off back, prior. Prior okay. is the greatest of all 
time. Because when you talk about guys who were able to take, you know, the pain and suffering of their mm -hmm. lives and turn it into humor, yeah, he is as good as it gets, man. I agree. So Pryor is at the top. Uh, Eddie Murphy, for me, right there, too. Because with all the movies that he's done, what his career, his career is at right now, people forget about yeah. just how amazing a stand-up comedian he was. Fantastic. He was just, just amazing. I so still want that red outfit. Bro, let me tell you. I, still, I think he was so good. His specials are so good. I think they intimidate him now, but that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, I, I understand. Mm. I understand. But it's I, like yeah. he was right there. Yeah, at the top. So you got Pryor, you got Eddie Murphy, George Carlin. He's George Carlin. Funny. Yeah, George Carlin is. Oh, he's you, good. When you talk about not just observational humor, but political really just, humor. just political humor and. Mm -hmm. He was so smart and so poignant and so just it, it it was and for me it was always crazy because I didn't know why I didn't necessarily understand why I was laughing because I was still a kid. Like right. we were watching all these HBO specials and like as we were like children, right? right? So we're watching, you know, Robin Williams and all these cats and Billy Crystal and Ruby Goldberg and all this funny. stuff, and the whole comic relief deal. Yes, all of these comedians, Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, like we watching all Good of this. Yeah. have no idea what's going on. I'm but like, it was so God. funny. But it was funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's great stuff. And no so, one's supposed to be watching it. Right. But still, it's just just, just great. So, Pryor, Murphy, Carlin, and. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's hard for me to pick number four, but Chappelle. Thank you, because I was about to say, if he's not on this, I don't know if we can be related no more. Ch Chappelle changed the game. <sighs> he changed the game. With a, lot, yeah. with a lot of what he was doing in Chappelle's show, you know, ratcheted, rat took it up a notch. So, yeah. yeah. Just me personally. Now, everybody ain't going. You always going to have people who don't agree with you with yeah. whatever Mount Rushmore <laughs> you do. But for me, those are the four that That's are just four. heads and show head and shoulders above everybody else. Uh oh, he about to ignorant. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I was wondering, lovely. Who was yours? Me. Oh, easy. Oh. Dave Chappelle. Don't laugh. Eddie Griffin. He's good. I get that. I absolutely love Just Eddie don't Griffin. let him talk afterwards. No, no, no. After that, we got to shut up. You, you, you have to be quiet. Um, shit. Uh, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Griffin. There's a guy I cannot remember his name to save my life, but I think he is so. Hamburger. Funny. He's uh, absolutely not. Hamburger. So, Hamburger. Absolutely yeah, not. Burger. What's my, my my girl with the big teeth and the big lips? She reminds Chill me of wolf. myself. No. Um, <laughs> lips and, and teeth. Um, Some more. I love her too. But no, she, uh, 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 Adele Givens? Adele, Adele Givens. Givens. Adele Givens. Yeah, yes. Adele Givens. I have to put her up there. I love Adele Givens. Um, and number four. For stand up, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I think my number four is somebody that probably a lot of people might not put on theirs, but it's the stuff that he talks about. I love Deion Cole. Yeah. Oh, he's great. Oh, he's great. What did Deion Cole is great? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's well, that I, I, I am a fan of smart humor. Right. Um, I'm a fan of storytellers, which is my favorite part of wrestling. You know, oddly enough, is how you can tell a story from the beginning of your show, drag it to the end of your show, do a callback that we all can remember. And it's still be. I think Dave Chappelle is one of the funniest people to do that. I don't think I, I love the Chappelle show. Chappelle show is one of my favorite shows of all time. But I will stand 10 toes down and say that Dave Chappelle stand up specials. Maybe the funniest, and I mean from the killer. What was the first one he was in? Um, 
in DC. In DC. Yeah, when he was in DC. Yeah. Killing from, himself. That yeah. yeah. I think this man is the world's best storyteller of our time. That's just my I'm selling opinion. weed, baby. <laughs> I'm selling weed. I got kids. Yeah, that that's a funny <laughs> man. He's fan because I'm a fan of a callback. If you say something at the beginning of your show and yeah. you can that the first time I met OJ Simpson, that was a <sighs> fantastic bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, fam, who's just, yours? Who you just got? Sprinkle, just sprinkle some crack on it. Just sprinkle some crack on it. Oh, I don't want to go... leave no mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> Saw this one time before when oh, I was a rookie. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't want to leave no mysteries. <laughs> oh, I'm watching that. I would have to go. I go Chappelle Rock. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, like with, with with Richard, Eddie, and Red Fox, I always have a tough time there. I'm gonna go Red uh, Fox because he's the OG there, uh, and um, just amazing at telling dirty jokes. And my yeah. number four mm-hmm. is uh, speaking of Chicago, uh, Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb is one of the most ridiculous okay. people. I bet he came. <laughs> he just came out one night we, in Baltimore. He's like, Yo, shout out to all the uh, fat women with regular people legs. <laughs> <laughs> I right. always want to have sex with t-shirts on. Anyway, listen, he's a very, <laughs> very funny dude. He's a very, very See, funny. Dude. I love another ridiculous like person though. Yeah. Like Corey, like Corey, I love it when you, you just be real silly mm-hmm. and just make really just go throughout your entire set like that. There's uh I put uh I was talking about Patrice O'Neill the other day because he died <sighs> like, like 13 years ago, like last week. He's and so Patrice hilarious. for me. He was right before he passed. He was right there on the precipice he was of about really to blow. breaking out because yeah. that whole. If you've never seen anybody who's watching y'all, that whole special elephant in the room. Elephant in the room mm-hmm. is on YouTube, like just to watch. You don't have to go put it on the streaming service or anything like that. You just go watch that whole special. It is hell- It is one of the funniest hour hours of comedy I've ever seen before in my life. So that kind of stuff. Just it's it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So yeah, it's huh, yeah, it's hard for them people too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And it so, it's funny. The some of the funniest stand-up comedians that you're gonna know that you ever that you ever seen have worked for them people. Eh? Them boys. Them boys. You yeah. and y'all know is you. you I know, know you. You know. you know what I'm talking. You you we know. know. I know, I know you know. And y'all you, know too. And Tisha and Mr. YouTube. Y'all yeah, yeah. We just say, I'm just saying. We they, they, they want the footed people. So it's like, uh, who, I, who do you think could, like, in the world of comedy now, would make sense to go over there and work for them people now? Oh. <laughs> I think, I, I think Ali Sadiq could. Help them oh, tell dude, some really, yeah. really good nuanced oh, yeah. stories. Uh, Ali, Ali will be great. Um, God, I'm you love him. Uh, you know <clears throat> who I would love to see do it, but he would never do it. Anthony Jessel. Just I, I, don't I mean, <laughs> mean dude. He, like either him or Tosh. Cause I I know I because they're kind of like, especially if they go to Netflix, mm-hmm. I think that would that because I want to do more edgy stuff in the coming year because they're going to Netflix and I don't th- I can't think of anything edgier than those two uh, except for Rife but screw him we have uh, no turn that up yeah turn no. that up we we'll talk about that offline but turn that no, up no Yikes. no no turn that I'll use the up. words that I actually want to use offline yeah we don't go we're not gonna do that no, to your brand not no, on this no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> Oh wow! Hey, um, <laughs> big H. <hate. laughs> speaking big part, of big part. big, <laughs> speaking of uh, uh, messing up the professor's brand. Uh-oh. Here we go. I was I, I in me, me and my wife were in New Orleans uh, a little over a year ago, and we so happened to stroll down on the professor. Uh oh, at the casino. Yes, sir. Losing all the money. Gambling. And, no, and, uh, I was working. Yeah. So I, I come over to uh, the professor's job with uh, my beverage of choice. Uh, 
you know, and we, you know. So first of all, me and the uh, professor always be cool. Of course. But uh, he immediately put me to work. He said, "Well, you might want to go on sit down, put the headset on." Mm-hmm. What would possess you to give me a microphone on live radio? I didn't like that radio station. Um, you did that. <laughs> <laughs> you gave him a hot mic. That's why I don't work that now. Um, like Damn. get them. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Let's have it. let's sabo this whole deal, uh, fam. The floor is yours. Uh, no, I, well, what, 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 we were talking football, and of course, you know. The fellas get together. It was me. Sloan was there too. So the fellas get together, talk a little football. The kind of thing that happens. So you know, I I've always been one when I have a platform like that, and I have my people with me. Come on, let's do it. Because I'm not, I'm not one to not give my my folks uh, a platform to not give my folks an opportunity. You know, right. Let's, Let's let's try to do something. Let's work on something. Let's make something happen. Right. So, fam was in town. We had the opportunity to do it. So, why the heck not? I don't see why not. Very. And we had a blast. Had a great time. Happy to be ill, fam seven nine, and not lovely the vole with libations. I'm very happy that it was fam. I'm very happy that it was. Well, you go. Hey, well, first of all, they have a delay button, so we we it would have worked regardless. Um, not with liquor. Well, you know, you 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 hear me without it. <laughs> you make a point. All right, you, I just want to make sure make, we. Well, you make a point. You make a point. I would have put you on on air anyway, but again, you make a point. I I'd have right. just said, "All right, I'm gonna stop." <laughs> but one thing I did want to ask you that was. Just as we were talking just about like the stand up and just your transition and getting that dream back and getting on the stage with one of your favorites. Being in this world of TikTok, right? Uh And being a part of the older crowd, what's the one thing from TikTok that has driven you absolutely insane to where you're like, I don't. I don't want to be a part of this world. You know, you you have that thing that just kind of like, I don't. I don't want to do this. So I do a lot of Gen X content. Mm-hmm. And fam is fam, I know fam, you know fam seven nine, so I know he's Gen X like me. Uh, you not so much. It's okay. old ass nigga. Of course, of course, of course. That's what a millennial. Will say. That's what a millennial will say. Of course. So, <laughs> uh, one thing that I get you know, like these these kids that are constantly putting these videos out there, like Gen X, where are you? Why aren't you speaking? Because we know to shut the hell up. Like, we, <laughs> we, we came up in a generation where it's like it's none of my business. I, I'm not trying to be in anybody else's business. It's none of my business. No, so if it's none of my business, to. I'm gonna stay out of the business. Of course, these kids can't shut up. They're gonna talk about everything and anything. They are outraged by everything and anything. Everything. They are offended by everything and anything. And me, I'm just like. Okay. Like, okay. but it's it's annoying. Very these videos of people like, oh man, why y'all ain't saying nothing? Why blah 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 blah? Also, because we probably didn't already said it, and nobody listened. I mean, what's the point? I've already said it like fifteen times. Where were you? Y'all don't listen. And I, I speak know. for for the 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 millennials in the room. We have been so traumatized with everything. We tell y'all things in a different way. Y'all just don't. We say it very calm. You know that person right there might blow this place up. Maybe like you're judging. Okay. Fair enough. You got it. And you know what happens hey. ten minutes later, <laughs> P- Professor? I'm a one second. I told y'all niggas. That's where that came from. Yeah. Because y'all don't listen. Yeah. We'll see your mother. <laughs> Hey, sometimes ain't no hot, ain't no fire hot enough to burn, uh, to 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 know it's hot from looking at it. Sometimes okay. you got they to got to put that hand in it. And that's yeah. but that's that's being a knucklehead. That's that's you being a, a big old knucklehead where you have the opportunity. Well, I've told you, don't do this. Yeah, I've told you. That that's like when you tell your kids, don't jump off the couch. And you know what you they gonna hurt do. yourself. You gonna hurt yourself? No, I'm good. Jump off the couch. Ah, what happened? What? Well, you jumped off the couch. Then. Jumped yep, off you the hurt yourself, couch. didn't you? Yeah. Now we in well, the ER. I tried to tell you. Yeah. I tried now to tell well. you. Don't go across the car. Don't I tried to tell you. 
Jay Wall is to me. It's like, see, now I, oh. I don't feel bad when they hurt themselves off the couch. I'm, I'm proud at that point. Oh, look at them learning. That's how you learn. <laughs> That's how you learn. What's wrong Good with you, man? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm the old the, the pops. I'm dad and um and. That's how you gotta learn sometimes. You that dad that's they that catch your, your child smoking a cigarette and you gotta smoke the whole box. You wanna smoke it? Do the whole box. Go ahead. That's, that's that old school upbringing though. Look at him. <laughs> Maybe I grew up on the dirt road. It's you know okay. I mean? That's what Baltimore do to you. I do no, want to no, no, ask. Severin. Same thing. You know I mean? Same thing, whatever. Ain't no so, dirt roads in <laughs> ain't no dirt roads in Baltimore. No, there's it, some dirt roads, but it ain't the same ones we're talking about today. It's ooh. ooh. Now, <laughs> this is the only time that we are going to have a wrestling moment on this podcast. Uh-oh. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, got to do it. So, yeah. at the time that you guys will be seeing this, we will be two weeks or a week removed. Yeah. We, yeah, we get some change removed from one of the greatest heartbreaks that we as a community and culture, shut up, fam, because I know you probably feel different and I'll deal with you in a moment, um, that we have experienced as a culture and as a fandom where we saw not only the dismantlement of New Day, oh. but the way they turned on Biggest E. Oh. And Professor, I have got to know, what were your thoughts how did you feel and how are you feeling now? How's your mental? Okay. To answer this question, I got to take it back. Take it. Uh, 2023, I'm in England. Filming a TV show. NBC. How mm -hmm. Wheels on the Challenge. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of uh, building a car. And they say, hey, guys, we want to introduce you to our guest judge. Nick, we know you love wrestling, so I know you love this guy, Big E. E comes strutting down, doing the whole power pause. With this is whole this picture of me and E looking at each other like, ah! and that was like real time. Them taking pictures because they knew I was going to be super surprised. And I, we do the whole deal, and then we cut. Me and E are all to the side talking and chatting, and it's just he's just the nicest guy. So cool. Apparently, he already knew who I was mm -hmm. because he was talking to the people in the trailer, uh, you know, on back off camera and off of the set about, you know, oh, so this is the guy that does like the wrestling entrances. Da, 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 da. I love him. I love him. So just talking to him, getting to know him was just great. He's a very, very nice man. Nice uh, we man. kept in contact. Since then, we mess each other all the time on Instagram. Anytime I see him on like the pre shows or doing something on like some sports thing, I'll be like, Hey, man, love the suit, keep doing what you're doing, look great out there. He's like, Thank you, my brother, I appreciate it. Well, we've kept in contact a good bit. So, to see what I was so hyped, he was like, I'm gonna be your manager until I'm medically clear. And the, the, the roller coaster that my emotions went on after that moment. Because it was all the way up here. There was now you want to do this now. It, it felt like somebody grabbed a shotgun and said, Shh, shh. But the, in the worst middle part, of your chest. The worst part about it wasn't Woods. Talk about it. We, we we kind of figured that Woods was gonna go down this road. But then when Kof comes right behind him, it's like, no, he's right. <laughs> <clears throat> I was done. I, first of all, I've I've liked him begrudgingly for years now mm -hmm. since I found out he was a Patriots fan. Patriots fan. So I like I you had I, one foot out. Yeah, I was already I was he was already on thin ice. He, he did just take that picture last week with all the rings. I've I just, seen it. And he know. don't like R and B music. We cannot I've, trust him. I've already put in he the request. Did. To my to the Bills, the Bills Mafia for them to put fifty up on the Patriots in the in a couple of weeks. So we are gonna see if that comes through. But this guy, uh, this guy stinks. Both of them. 
<laughs> I, I, I can't with those guys. I, I'm so disappointed in Woods and Kofi. Uh, but what I hope this is going to lead to, what I think this will lead to, is a Rumble return. Yep. For E. Like, this is setting up a return to the Rumble in the Rumble where he mm-hmm. eliminates both Kofi and Woods. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, make some kind of run in the Rumble, even though he probably won't win it. But, but still, just to, have that moment. but just just to have that moment, and the, just so that's what I'm hoping this is leading to. Like, yeah, they no, because I got to watch the rumble by myself. Then I can't watch my I can't watch the rumble in public if Biggie come back. Yes, you and can, because we all gonna be crying as a unit. Oh no, I can't. I ain't gonna be able to do it. I'm. I got to sit in the house now. Right. I, I, I'm. You don't I'm, can't be crying in public. Not in front of people. No, not he can't. That is that is a moment we can hit. Let me tell you something. I am upset with Woods, right? You know, don't do that to, to my boy. Don't, you know. But if there was ever somebody in New Day who should be upset or have a chip, it is Woods. That man, I get, I understand the mentality. I do not appreciate the outcome. Right. Because he had... He's arguably the best. I said it on Twitter. He's arguably the best of the mic, most underrated in the ring. He <laughs> supported everybody, you know, completely selflessly and was always everybody's biggest champion. And then when he finally got the one thing he wanted, which was the King of the Ring tournament win, them damn Samoans beat the hell out of him. Nah, y'all like them niggas. Nah, keep going. On. No, no, no. <laughs> And he, <laughs> but then, <laughs> then peanut butter people. Wait a minute. That's they tone. They tweet. I call them peanut butter colored. I had one. I can call them that. Um, <clears throat> but nah, no people nah, 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 how Wait a minute. They won't. I know they ain't how I work. Yo, people. Who people? You. you. They you. not my people. You. Y'all is they my ain't people. Not math work. Yes, your people, ill fam, five two. But hey, listen. <laughs> okay, but you know what I mean. He he had something because I feel like the King of the Ring meant more to him than the title. He uh-huh. had it. Not only did they beat it all for him, uh-huh. they took the damn okay. Yeah. They took the damn crown. You know what I mean? So he and then he never. He was the only one in the group that never got the championship. So I get the chip, but Kofi. Let me tell you something. You watch your goddamn back, brother. Because we made Kofi Mania the biggest thing that ever came through these parts, uh-huh. and you had the unmitigated gall oh, like and the and the temerity Ooh, to not use words temerity. like that. Because I, because you got to talk smart when you talk about the new day. You know uh-huh. they're smart. The temerity to lose in six seconds, even though that wasn't really your fault. You lost it in six seconds, okay? <laughs> and then you have the nerve. To bring in Chris, Chris biz- was at home minding her business, being the good woman that she is to Big E. Didn't know nothing about nothing. Mm-hmm. And you had to bring her name in there. That's personal to me. That's my friend. That was oh, my wife. Ready, that was my wife before she was Big E's woman. That's so right. now we got beef. So be, uh, Kofi, cover your ears, earmuffs, professor. Oh, Lord. <sighs> hey. Fuck you, nigga. Okay. <laughs> I still heard it. I still heard it. it and, that, and that was from the heart. That's I love not knowing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what joker she was going to play. A big joker or a little joker? No, she's Mm-mm. a big. Ah. Big, big old joker with the big purr. Yeah. Oh, I ain't going to say it again because his earmuffs is back on. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's how we gonna segue to the next part of our, <laughs> our show, which is for oddly enough called the five count, where we ask you five. Hey, Biggie, did listen? Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. See, Biggie, I see. I we see you. You. I saw show. at the pay per view, and you got a five count. Where you get that from, Cuz? Huh? You know, we gonna talk about that a tour, uh-huh. right? Because you know where you get that. I, where is that dope? <laughs> Mr. N-word, I ain't gonna say, but we'll get back to it. <laughs> so this is, this is our five count where we ask you five random questions just to kind of tap into your brain outside of the norm. Sir, are you ready? Ready. 
All right. Number one, what's the perfect song? By Cherry and Moore, Steve Wonder. Mm. That's a good one. That's that a great one. A good one. The next question is the only question on this list uh, that does have a right or wrong answer. Oh, boy. In your home, in your home, does the toilet paper go under the roll or over the roll? Over. You are correct, sir. Good job. You win nothing. Absolutely. And the no. prize Actually, after. you win, a, uh, you win a, 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 a lifetime supply of Dax, uh, which is uh, exactly one can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the third question on the five count: What movie traumatized you as a kid? Cujo. Mm. As I'm hey, playing in the hood on top of an escort. Oh, dude! All oh. black people scared of dogs, and they just so. <laughs> then watching that movie made it worse. I could walk. Down did the you know? Did you know that it was like a person? It wasn't a dog. I, so I know apparently, I know now, yeah. yeah, I found out like a couple months ago that it was a it's a person in a dog suit playing Cujo. It's not really a dog. Right. It's like them dudes from the Planet of the Apes. They had them uh, the things over top of them. They were walking like apes and monkeys. <laughs> I was, I was like, why did y'all Cujo. tell us that? Why y'all tell us that? Now it ain't scary. We go back and realize it's a, it's a Bama in the suit. Like, ain't no <laughs> goddamn dog. That's Larry. Yeah. That ain't no <laughs> damn puppy. <laughs> oh, sick. oh man! All right, we are from a, a similar era, uh, brother professor. Yeah, we were at the beginning of tech and the computer age, and it was a very embarrassing teen part of our lives where we got. Our first email address. Oh boy. What was your first email address? Uh it's the same one I still have on Yahoo. H A N I 74532 at Yahoo.com. The reason is because that was my email at uh Grandland State. Uh just when you sign up to, you know, that they use like part of your first name, part of your last name. Random numbers mm -hmm. at gram.edu. That was yeah. when we first had like that was the first. So I thought I had to use that for Yahoo too. I was like, well, since they gave it to me, I have to use this in my email address now, now right? Like this is gonna be my my email address anyway. You thought it was your new social security number. Yeah, I thought I was like, yeah. So they just they issued this to me. So this is what I'm gonna have to use for, on everything. So let me go ahead and make that happen. So I did on my on my Yahoo and Dang. yeah. So that's where we are. Look at fair, that. Fair, fair enough. No, no embarrassing email for you. That's that's no, all right. No, 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 no. That's all right. Look Not I'll be so early at coolers.com. Not none of that. No. All right. <laughs> all right. No, and no. the la the last question on the five count, by far my favorite. What is your favorite episode of Martin? Uh <laughs> now we're getting to the good information. Uh so many to choose from. It would have okay. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. It's the episode where Martin uh lost his CD player. <laughs> the new Jack City episode. Mm. Oh man. That day. <laughs> right. Boy, let me tell you something. And that got dang dog fell over. <laughs> and then my dog fell over. But, Ugh, but God almost spit up. But, but that's my favorite episode. My favorite moment is the and lovely. You know exactly what this is from Martin the outtake when he's singing. This is how we do it. <laughs> Gotta get your groove on. Oh, Gotta get your groove on. <laughs> this is how we do it. <laughs> Y'all love those because the like. Eventually, it'll be like three takes where like Martin is cutting up, and the third one got Dave Gina like, all right, well, I'm all right, that's enough. <laughs> I'm just waiting. It was it wasn't even the gotta get the groove on. It was the gotta get your groove. It was the damn. Oh, <laughs> uh, Martin's physical was crazy. Oh, uh, 
I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but if you've never seen uh, Martin stand up, run, tell that, that has got to be one of the funniest things I've seen. That bit that he has when he was drunk, drinking cognac, and he was getting drunk. (laughs) What do you say? (laughs) Oh, Oh, I love that man. Me and my wife's first dates. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cute Hi. and stuff. <laughs> Mr. Professor, brother, Nicholas, sir, thank you so much for spending your time here with us. We have had a ball. Um, I'm sorry it took so long to make this happen, but everything happens when it's supposed to. Amen. Tell the people where they can find you, what you have coming up, or any last words that you want to leave <clears throat> with folks. Uh you can find me on all social, Mr. Professor 318, uh, everywhere. Um, you can catch me on tour. Um, doing a show with Lamar Henry. Uh, I think this will air after that. So yes. catch me in uh, Atlanta, January 5th. I'll be in New Orleans in February, in Vegas in April, St. Louis in May, Boston in June. Uh, Austin, Texas, August. Uh, be in Seattle in September. We're doing a Gen X Takeover cruise out of Fort Lauderdale next November. Uh, so I might need some details. I might need some details. Go to genxtakeover.com uh, for details on all of the things. Um, what else? I'm sure this. Oh, the merch. Uh, make sure you go to the link in all of my bios for the We Rock Together merch. A uh, portion of the proceeds from every single piece of merch that we sell goes to a charitable organization. Uh, the majority of them go to the local food bank here in uh, Tangipahoa Parish, where I live in Louisiana. And thank you to those who have already bought merch and who have supported the cause. We truly appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure there's something that I'm forgetting that my wife is going to scold me about as soon as I get off of here. But yeah, Rock, okay. don't. The not, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the new album Yachts Giving just dropped on Spotify. It'll be on Apple Music here in a little bit. Should be on Apple Music by the time this uh, airs. Uh, thank you to everybody who has supported the Yacht Rock stuff. It's uh, it's real silly. I can't believe that people actually like buy it and enjoy it. Uh, thank you so everybody much. The album, Yacht Rock. Mm-hmm. It was it, the album went up to number two on the R&B chart. Like it's an AI album. Like it was fantastic. Uh, October London was the only thing that. Kept it from being number one. So, I mean, it's like, it's crazy. So, thank y'all for all of that. I truly appreciate it. Y'all are amazing. Uh, if nobody told you today, you're loved, you're appreciated, you're important, you're more than enough exactly as you are. And always remember to be great. Fam, lovely, thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. I've been waiting to be on something else for a while. I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity to join you. And uh, it's been a blast, man. Loved it. Thank you. So happy. You tell that beautiful wife of yours that I absolutely love her. Give her all the kisses just for me. Ill fam, tell people, unfortunately, where they can find you. <laughs> hey, man, Ill fam 790 is social media choice, but I mean, more importantly, uh, Black Wrestling at BlackWrestling.com, right here where you at every uh, every Thursday night, 835 live with the cool call open, and then we get to, you know what I mean, doing what we doing. Um, and that's it, man. That's you know, that's it for me. Uh which which you which you what you got over there with your little business and all that. I ain't got nothing going on but the rent print. Um, uh, it's of course it's lovely to vote, all social media platforms. I don't really have anything going on right now. I'm trying to figure it out, but you know where you can find me on Wednesdays at 11 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the YouTubes with this one over here, because for some reason we are always something else. Bye. Oh, oh, shit. Say it again. Say something else. Oh, say something else. Say something else, nigga.